Yes, good afternoon. Now, today's topic is arm. In fact, today we'll be covering part one of the arm, and tomorrow it will be part two. Now, see. For the arm, there will be so many sub contents, so many muscles, nerves, arteries, right? You'll feel like, yes, we have already covered those things. But over here in the arm, it would be a sort of compilation, right? Everything would be compiled in such a way that picture would be crystal clear before we'll be proceeding for the forearm next week, right? So here is the arm part one and yes today i'll be asking you so many questions right all those questions which will be related to particularly this subject right all right first thing first when you take a cross section right when you take a cross section of the arm so here is the humerus right you'll find that there are septa that is septum which is dividing the arm into anterior part and the posterior part right simple as that now this anterior that's where the flexor group of muscles will be there <coughs> flexors and this posterior that's where the extensor groups will be there right. makes sense because this is pretty neat right and part one is this and part two is extensor group so that's the reason that today most of our focus would be for the anterior part though at times we'll go posteriorly and we'll see some of the contents right but the focus would be over here only now these septa Right. they will be playing a very crucial role into the formation of this arm. So let's see the bones first. As always, we'll start with something which we already know. We know two structures very clearly, at least now. That is this topmost portion, which was the acromion process. So I'll start writing in short. Right, And over here, the lateral, lateral most bony prominence, and that is greater tubercle right and once greater tubercle is known so you know the lesser tubercle and once the lesser tubercle is known so then in between there is intertubercular sulcus tubercular sulcus also called as the bicipital groove right and then there is a prominence over here which would be writing in big that is deltoid tuberosity because this level would be very interesting this level right it is this level which will be studying in more detail as so many things will be occurring at this level okay and finally just the touch of elbow right just in last five minutes we'll be watching few of the structures of elbow so that next time when we'll be studying elbow the things will be in a continuous flow that is next week right Okay, so just one point that is medial epicondyle, right? Just medial epicondyle. Bus, this much is sufficient. Over here, almost everything is known to us, but that one is deltoid tuberosity, right? Because deltoid will be there. And as we said that this level is important. That's why this round is our surgical neck right and you must be knowing that surgical neck is associated with one important nerve and that nerve is and if i ask one more question that that nerve is from which cord can you answer it right because today for almost the entire session i'll keep on doing this many of the topics many of the questions which will be asked again and again so that they are cemented into your brain so try to answer as fast as possible good that is the axillary nerve right axillary nerve and this axillary nerve is associated with 
which artery and axillary nerve that's right it is the posterior cord and it is associated with which artery right which artery posterior cord you think but yes you are thinking it right <laughs> that's right and it is associated with that paka right it is it is associated with which artery axillary nerve as it was crossing through that quadrangular space and was going posteriorly and it was associated with right posterior circumflex humeral axillary artery no 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 how can it be associated with axillary artery though it looks like the name is same but uh, uh, take care right it is not the axillary artery it is the circumflex but it is to be precise it is the posterior circumflex humeral artery pakka right two are there posterior circumflex humeral artery anterior circumflex humeral artery and they are part of <coughs> sorry they are part of which part of they are branches of which part of axillary artery axillary artery is divided into three parts right axillary artery is divided into three parts no problem that's fine right in three parts there was one muscle right that muscle before first part underneath second part after third part so posterior circumflex humeral artery is part of one or two or three three exactly three good <laughs> right okay so that's how we go this portion right this right as i said just a slight touch of that uh, elbow right so this is because some cute names are there it is called as capitulum right even even listening to this is so cute right it is capitulum and this one is also very nice name trochlea right trochlea is like a pulley right it's like a pulley it's a it's a hinge joint right so as if that hinge is applied and that's how it moves right it's a hinge joint so more when we'll be talking about that joint but just keep in mind your doors right doors they are on hinge joint there is a hinge so it moves like this right so here also it is like a hinge joint okay but this much is sufficient for it and uh, rest you know so I, all all these things that is greater tubercle lesser tubercle intertubercle sulcus etc you are well aware of so let's move further right simply that's the surgical neck but surely i have not put this image for that i have put this image for one very royal nerve right which will be passing through this groove and that nerve is that nerve is which nerve i am talking about which nerve and this nerve is from which cord right and just by look at it we can say that we are watching the posterior aspect we are watching it on the posterior aspect median now uh no if you say median now so then this is this is serious no median now it cannot be right see no problems today will once again draw the entire brachial plexus because none of my students should be having any problem in this because we talked about so many times that the posterior cord right see don't worry even a uh, anterior cord wait 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 right see see it seems that you have to study actually you have to study brachial plexus bit properly again right so do go back to our uh, brachial plexus film and uh, and definitely take care of it see taking it in a very short way posterior cord which is formed by the posterior divisions of all three trunks right and then the one one branch which gives is axillary right yes axillary and that axillary right it will wind around right and it will go posteriorly and because it is posterior so next is the radial right so it is radial so this radial now it is royal radial now that's the name we have given right just to remember it properly so it is a royal radial now and it is royal because humerus said yeah because you are royal so let me give you a special seat for it right so a special seat a special place is given and that is what is called as the radial groove right it is called as the radial groove and it is in this groove our there is 
there is a movement of the right this placement of this radial nerve it is posteriorly that's right yes 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 <laughs> i saw you you don't have to type again and again but what what happens is that if i keep on telling yes 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 right <laughs> so i i as far as possible i definitely see <laughs> okay all right <laughs> so let's see this is this is what we were telling about the compartment right so let's see this lateral intermuscular septum and the medial intermuscular septum right so here it is they just divide one two so into anterior and posterior right so this posterior part it is called as the extensor compartment yeah that makes sense we talked about it and anterior one is the flexor but there is something extra and that extra is that that extra is flexor compartment it's fine but there are few extra this is transverse intermuscular septum right that is one and then there is anteroposterior septum it's okay right right now just keep it in mind because as the muscles would come this thing will automatically be clear but otherwise this portion otherwise say this portion or this portion or this portion technically they all are flexor right they all are flexor group so even if you consider that entire portion and the posterior portion enough right here is now i'll i know you know it so well that which muscle is this it has to be right that's the coracoid process and this is coraco brachialis right today i'll i'll write in brief right in in abbreviated form because you are now well comfortable with it right so i'll write it in brief right okay so that is coraco brachialis and obviously this is the medial border right it is the medial border where it is attached and yes that is the coracoid process and on coracoid process there is one more muscle which is attached which is superficial to this coraco brachialis right coraco brachialis that is fine but there is one more muscle which is attached superficial to coraco brachialis on the coracoid process which muscle i am talking about someone who is connected over here and it would cover this coraco brachialis which muscle i am talking about which muscle right short head of biceps exact this should be the answer very good right it is the short head of biceps because our long head of biceps so again it has got yes i'll use your word right i'll borrow your word it has got the special seat yes it has got the special seat for this bicipital groove and this entire is intercapsular right all the way it will go this long head of biceps will land where by the way right where will long head of biceps land now i'm enjoying right you guys are giving good answer so long head of biceps will land where where this flight would actually land of long head of biceps so that runway is where where will it land oh supraglenoid cavity cavity no it's not cavity it is supraglenoid supraglenoid prominence eminence right cavity right supraglen see this is glenoid cavity so this is the supraglenoid and it is the infraglenoid tubercle that's where it will land that's right good okay so this is interesting now let's move further okay now as we know see today the entire session will go like this right it will keep on adding we'll keep on adding one by one one by the structures right okay so now coraco brachialis is well known to you now to this coraco brachialis is pierced by one nerve right it is pierced by one nerve that nerve is it is highlighted in this pink color so which now are we talking about and if you can identify the now brachial artery no yes that's right this is the musculocutaneous now right musculocutaneous 
right? It is the musculocutaneous nerve. And this musculocutaneous, once again, I will ask, I know you, you must have guessed my question also, that it is, it is from which called musculocutaneous nerve is from which called, which called, it is from which called, posterior cord, medial cord, lateral cord, which cord, musculocutaneous nerve. Lateral cord, that's right, that's right. It is from lateral cord. Excellent, excellent, right? So we have now the flexors, right? These are the flexors of arm, this coracobrachialis. Yeah, a uh, posterior. How come posterior? Posterior to see, uh, Lalita, posterior ends like as we said, posterior is for posterior. Right, so one is the axillary, axillary will wind around the surgical neck, will go posterior. And then second one is radial, that royal radial, it will go posterior. Bas, posterior cord khatam. Right, posterior is over. So now we have got just two options, medial and the lateral. Right, and this lateral one, lateral one will be giving lateral root and medial one will be giving the medial root to form the median now, right, which will, will, which will come. <coughs> And rest what is left out, that would be the musculocutaneous nerve, right? That's from the lateral cord. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So this is good. Let's move further. Here it is, right? Now you know this muscle very well. So I won't ask, right? This is, okay, this is biceps brachii, right? Long head, short head. All good, right? Short head is there, right? This is short, this is long, and this long head, that entire, this long head, right? As we said, this is intracapsular, right? That's the only thing which you have to remember, and it will be landing on the supraglenoid tubercle. Who will be landing on infraglenoid tubercle? By the way, if this is glenoid, this is supraglenoid, right? Supraglenoid, you said that long head of biceps. So, who will be the cousin of biceps will be landing on the infraglenoid? Infraglenoid. Will be landing on infraglenoid. I'm reading. Anyone? Right? This is biceps this triceps long head of triceps that's right long head of triceps right good 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 you guys are doing good okay <laughs> right so this is easy now just so we can really move fast this is short head biceps right that's what has been highlighted so in case if there is any query completely clear all right let's move further this is good Right, long head and it is going completely intracapsular and will be landing. All both of them they are forming over here. That's called as the what is this called as? Let me see. Yeah, here this is much better. Right. This where both heads meet, right, and they lead to formation of fill in this blank bicipital. And then there is a long word. It's a long word. Tendon. Well, you can say tendon. I'll take that. But this is, gentlemen, this is a flat tendon. This is a flat tendon. Right? Or young lady. Right? Sorry. That is a flat tendon. So this flat tendon will give some new name. Right? No, you know this answer. This is what is called as the this is called as aponeurosis. Got it? Aponeurosis. So, aponeurosis is what? Aponeurosis is flattened tendon. It is a sheet like it is. Histologically, structure is similar, right? But it is like sheet, sheet like structure, a flattened one, right? So, it is a flat tendon. That is the bicipital aponeurosis. Then, which artery could this be? Though we have not yet discussed, right? I am still asking. Logically, which artery could this be? 
So even if you'll go for a wild guess, and still you'll be right. Even if you go for a wild guess, yeah, it has to be brachial artery, right? There cannot be any other artery, right? So this is this is brachial artery, and this brachial artery will divide it into two parts, right, at the elbow, as per the bone. So on the radial side, it would be the radial artery, and on the ulnar side, it would be the ulnar artery. Easy as that. But we are over here just to see that what happens to that bicipital aponeurosis. That bicipital aponeurosis, as it comes from the top and it lands again a special seat, right? Thanks, Abraham. Right? It has got again a special seat. And this seat, it is given again a royal name, right? If you can just see it properly, I'll mark it. I'm talking about this part, okay? This part, this one. And it is called as the radial tuberosity. Right? Radial tuberosity. So this radial, whether right, it is enjoying such important spatial seats. So this is radial tuberosity as it is on radial bone, radius, and this bicipital aponeurosis will be landing on that. This much is sufficient. We move to the next one. Yes. All these muscles. So, yeah. See, this, this image is, is of very specific importance. The reason is, yeah, radial tuberosity. The reason is, when we say brachialis, just brachialis, this means we are dealing with the arm. When we say coracobrachialis, that means there is something from coracoid process to the arm. Fine. Right? Biceps brachii. Because there is a muscle which is for the arm but it has got two heads. So biceps brachii. Right? But this is neat brachialis. His name is just brachialis. Right? Now as it is shown, right, brachialis. We have removed rest of the muscle, so actually we are watching those muscles which are on the back side, right? Say, this muscle, this one, which will be going on the top and we recently encountered it, that was coracobrachialis. But then there are few more muscles, right? See, one muscle which is, I am drawing, it is like this. This is one muscle, right? And then this is one, that's two, this is three. And uh, let's change the color. This is one, that's two, that's three. All of them, they are nothing but they are actually the triceps, right? And over here, making it easy, this one as it is lateral, so this would be the lateral, right? This is long and then that's the hidden one because when we watch it from the posterior side, that medial head is usually hidden, right? But we are watching it from the entire side. So that's why medial head is giving its darshan, right? So all of them, they are like triceps, right? Though this, this would be discussed at length tomorrow, but just on the way because it is coming. So we just had a look at it. Another point is that this brachial is, is connected, right? It is attached on the lower half. Right? It is the lower half of humerus. Lower half of humerus. Now this lower half of humerus is a bit special. See, if you take a cross section of the bone on the top, right, from the top, so it is round. But as you come at this level, that is middle, right, then it becomes like this. This is the change in the shape, right. So, if you take it like this is the anterior border, right? That's the anterior border. So, one side would be lateral, other side would be medial, right? So, we can say enteromedial and enterolateral side, true, right? Enteromedial, right? Enteromedial and the enterolateral. So, if I 
if I just draw it like this, right, and that's the bone, right, and uh, let's say these were the septas, right, so then this, this brachialis is connected something like, somewhere like this, like this, right. This makes the concept, concept much, much easier because now we can very confidently say that brachialis is attached. Now see, just by this figure, use of this figure, how effectively we say that where it is connected, right? Head, if this figure is not in front of you, right? I was just covering this figure with my hand, right? As if you guys are watching it. <laughs> anyway, so, so in case if this figure is not there, right? So then when we speak it, it, it looks a bit complicated. But now it would be so easy that we can say that brachialis is connected onto the lower half of the front of humerus on the enterolateral, enteromedial and the anterior border plus some of the fibers, they are connected, attached to the lateral and the medial intermuscular septa. What's the big deal in that? So simple, right? So simple. But when, if this figure is not there, then it looks so complicated. But, well, this is one of the, one of the muscle whose attachment, when you speak, it looks so stylish. And in case if some non-medical listens, right, they'll, they'll go crazy, right? That how can you remember so much? Yeah, there is nothing more to remember. It is so easy. Correct? So, do keep in mind that it is from enterolateral, from the anterior border, enteromedial surface, and obviously these are the septas. So they will some some fibers will take the liberty, and they will attach to those septas also. So that's how the attachment is there, right? Okay. So here it is, the bicipital. That is the bicipital aponeurosis, right? Bicipital aponeurosis is actually over here. Okay. Now see these muscles, actually all these muscles, right? They, those muscles, they are for forearm. They are for forearm. And, and some crazy names would come. Crazy names, right? Plexer, Parpi, Alnares, Right? Then this is extensor, carpi, ulnaris, longus. Right? On the first stroke, it, it looks like that it is impossible. Right? These are so confusing names. But then there are some very interesting tricks to remember. And that is what we'll be studying uh, next week. Right? When we'll be touching the forearm. But these muscles, right? They all are named as per their action. So once you'll understand the mechanism, it will become very easy to remember all those names, right? So this is just to show that, see, this is one muscle, that's the second muscle, this is the third muscle, right? That's the fourth muscle, right? Over here, this is supinator, right? All those muscles, right? It will be going as a group, right? Because when you just keep your hand and when you move your fingers, you'll find that there are there is movement of so many muscles. Right? So that's that's the point. Okay. Coming back to our area, right? That is the arm. Now in this, in this, as we said that this particular nerve which I have just marked, right? And you know that it is now musculo musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous means it has to supply few of the muscles because then it will be giving the cutaneous supply. But muscles, which muscles will it supply? The very, <coughs> sorry, very easy to remember, right? The muscles which we just saw, <laughs> simply. We saw just three muscles, correct? First, we saw that biceps brachii. Then we saw that coracobrachialis, right? And then finally we saw brachialis. But that's it. That's it. Sorry. Right? So that's it. These are the muscles which will be supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve. And yes, they will be the muscular branch. Right? 
that would be the muscular branch okay now there is one nerve over here and there is a nerve one nerve over here right i'll just number it two and this is three this two is which nerve right which nerve is two giving you the hint that see in which direction it is going this is lateral side just i'm giving a hint so this now would be this now would be num we're talking about number two this number two would be ulnar now take care take care ulnar now see have you yeah okay so two answers are coming up median now and the ulnar now for ulnar now i'll always say that say if you are sitting just stroke your elbow stroke your elbow on some substance and substance and and when when it is hit over here right there is current in the entire hand right the entire hand is so much so much in pain but that is ulnar now right when you tap because that is it is going through that groove we'll we'll see it in more detail but it is going posterior so when you tap it right it gives pain especially clinically in leprosy right that now becomes very prominent it becomes like a cord it becomes cord like right in leprosy but this is not going posteriorly this is anterior right but it is actually in the medial side so this is median correct median and this median now let me trick you this median now median oh you you even experimented <laughs> so this median now is is from which cord lateral cord medial cord or posterior cord median now is from which cord posterior cord lateral cord or medial cord median now yes exactly it is from lateral and medial both because both of them will be giving the lateral and the medial root respectively correct right it is right you got it right right it is not only from the medial cord because medial cord is mainly the main root is is from the medial but it is the lateral cord also which will be giving the lateral root right lateral root and the medial root and they both will be collectively forming the median nerve excellent and now this one is easy right that shocking nerve is our ulnar nerve okay all right these are by the way muscular branches right the things which are highlighted right they are nothing but all the muscular branches of musculocutaneous let's go a bit still in depth this is a very conceptual thing because in one image i have tried to put all the nerves right so gradually we are making it bit complex so that we understand that what's really happening now watch it that over here one muscle has become bit transparent right so over here if you can see this that that is our brachialis correct that brachialis muscle is transparent now i'll remove this so that you get a complete idea yeah. hmm. so so this is this is like you are watching it through now we have first we say that this is ulnar ulnar is known to you median is known to you right so by the process of elimination we'll keep on eliminating that okay this is known this is known so this is also known to us 
right? That is which one? This is musculocutaneous, right? This is musculocutaneous. It means there is only one nerve which has been highlighted, right? In the form of that pink color, this one, that is also a nerve. Which nerve could it be? And this nerve is coming from the back side. And then it is from back side, it is coming in front. Now over here, it is in front. We are, yes, that's right. That is the radial nerve. And because it was that royal radial, which was traveling through the groove and that groove, because it was in shaft, so something goes wrong to the shaft, shaft breaks, radial is damaged. Correct? But radial after that successfully goes, right, from posterior to anterior. Now when, answer this. When radial, listen carefully, when radial is going from posterior to anterior, which intermuscular septum it should pierce? Right? Some of the long sentences, right? But actually they are so simple and so logical. Right? So what I'm asking is, this radial nerve would pierce, which will traverse through which in septum, which septum? Which intermuscular septum? There are two intermuscular septum, lateral and medial. So it has two peers. Which one? That's right. Right? And that's right. It has to be the radial intermuscular septum or you can say lateral intermuscular septum. Exactly. Right? Lateral or radial intermuscular septum. What is the big thing in that? But when you say, right, it looks so gracious that this radial now, as it passes posteriorly through the radial radial groove right and then it leaves the posterior compartment by piercing lateral intermuscular septum and thus appearing on the anterior aspect and people will say are wow 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 kya baat hai? right but as such what kya baat hai? it is so easy right so logical it has to because it won't come on this side on the on the medial side and will pierce medial septum right so it has to pierce the septum good so, now do remember that in the elbow, right, when this is, this is elbow, right, it would be called as the cubital fossa, right, elbow is also called as the cubital fossa, cubital fossa. So, when we'll be discussing cubital fossa, at that point, you'll find that this radial nerve will be sitting exactly in anterior because from here onwards, yes, it is anterior. Right? So, do remember this. Okay. Meantime, for the medial side, it is the median nerve which is taking over. All the way, the median nerve, it is going. Median nerve, it is going. That's median, median, median. Right? All the way. So, now only two nerves are traversing for the forearm, median and radial. Okay? Remember, ulnar was posterior. Okay? Now, one important concept. One important concept. It is this musculocutaneous nerve, right? It is this musculocutaneous nerve. As we said, it supplies what? It supplies biceps brachii, right? It supplies coracobrachialis. It supplies brachialis. But if you if you if you want to isolate one muscle, so then we would like to isolate this coracobrachialis because coracobrachialis is on one side, right? It is on one side. So between biceps brachii and the brachialis, this musculocutaneous is sandwiched between these two muscles, right? And then from one side there is coraco. Brachialis. But if you really want to see the existence, the location, where exactly, so you remove the bicep. So see, the nerve is going like this, is giving few upper fibers, right, up fibers to bicep brachii. It is giving some down fibers to brachialis, right, and some side fibers to coracobrachialis. So that's how it will supply, like this, like this, like this, right. So just a concept that I like the word that sandwich. Right? Because I am a bit foodie. So, <laughs> right? So, it is, it looks nice, na? That nerve is sandwiched between biceps brachii and brachialis. So, every time you, you eat the sandwich, you remember this. So, never a problem. You don't have to cram. Okay. 
हाँ लेट्स डू अ वेरी हाई स्पीड रिविजन ऑफ दिस ब्रेकियल प्लेक्सिस राइट विल गो बिट फास्ट बट आई एम रिपीटिंग इट अगेन एंड अगेन एंड आई ऑलवेज अर्ज दैट यू ड्रॉ अलॉन्ग विद मी right you draw along with me because it will take just 2 minutes but in those 2 minutes once you have drawn you will find that the concept would be crystal clear right so let's move c5 c6 c7 c8 t1 right then this is root these are the root so tak tak this is c5 this is this this and root and they will lead to formation of trunk right so these are just by looks this is the upper trunk this is the middle trunk this is the lower trunk right they divide into into to divisions right so they are the divisions divisions i am not writing anterior posterior anterior posterior anterior posterior okay so this is anterior posterior anterior posterior anterior posterior right let's join the only the anterior division of upper two right that is upper and middle trunk so that will lead to formation of just a minute right let's draw it short over here so that we get some space to draw it over there huh. so that will lead to formation of lateral cord right and we said that medial that is the smallest word so it will be having the least roots so this is the medial cord right this is medial cord lateral is the next word and posterior right a long one p o s t e r i o r r so long right so that's why tuck tuck and tuck and that leads to posterior cord right posterior cord to we said that yes it will give this axillary artery right and then uh, it will continue as the royal radial uh, axillary artery i said crazy axillary no sorry <laughs> okay right and then this lateral cord let's make things easy right and then they are the roots so this is the medial root and this is the lateral root right medial root and this will lead to that now which is the median i'm writing n capital so that we don't make mistake and we say medial right it has median so it is the median now right almost things are settled only thing which is left out is what happens to that lateral cord well we said that it is this musculo musculo cutaneous nerve right that is musculo cutaneous nerve only thing which is left out is now our medial nerve right so that is medial cord and that medial cord will be giving the ulnar nerve right in this we need to see one extra thing that this lateral cord would be the continuation as musculo cutaneous nerve right this is important so that that lateral root is is minor as compared to medial because medial cord if i draw it like this medial cord will be continuing as the medial root of median now so here ulnar nerve will be having the lesser ulnar nerve will be having the lesser importance right because mean most of the fibers they will be going like this and obviously the posterior cord so then there is no no doubt about it that it has to be the radial nerve right so he, these are like main main nerves then we can add like say from c5 c6 c7 right So let's see in the color. So C5, oh, it is not C properly. C5, C6, C7, and it's a long nerve. So where that's why it is called as long thoracic nerve, right? Long thoracic nerve, which will be supplying to that serratus anterior. And in case if anything goes wrong to this nerve, then person becomes bird, right? Why do I say that person becomes bird? Because when he tries to push, right, it leads to winging of the scapula right so then it's like person becomes bird right scapula is it is called as the winged scapula right winged scapula 
in exam, don't speak like this, huh? that in case if anything happens to this long thoracic nerve, then person becomes bird. Right? Don't, don't say that. Okay. Then there are only two nerves which are in Let me create some space. Uh -uh. Huh. So, from this upper trunk, upper trunk is just one trunk from where? From where? Sorry. Right? It will supply those muscles. Right? Yeah, winging of the scapula. True. So, this is supra scapular. Correct? Supra scapular. And it will also supply that chota sa muscle, and that is subclavius. Right? So, it is now to subclavius and the supra scapular now, which will be supplying. Right? Okay. Right now, we are not going into more detail of rest of the that is thoracodorsal and the upper subscapular or lower subscapular right? because this much is needed. Today we need to see this musculocutaneous, median nerve, ulnar nerve, radial nerve, axillary nerve. Right? These are the nerves which are in sharp focus for today. So, because rest of the nerves they were for that scapular region which we have already covered. Right? So, let us move further over here. Yes, this is very interesting now. Let's pick up this area, this area, right? Somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle, this is that point or that special seat where so many things will occur, right? So many things. And that's why this is so interesting. That is what is called as the changes which are occurring at the level of the mid of the arm, middle of the arm or at the level of deltoid tuberosity. So changes at the level of deltoid tuberosity. Now, some of the changes, they are so simple, so logical that effortlessly you will say that, okay, these are the things which can really occur. One, one I would say, deltoid muscle is attached. Yeah, obviously, right? So, let us let's go it from depth and we come out. First thing first, draw this. You must have guessed, right? This is the shaft of the humerus from circle, from, from round shape, right? It becomes triangular. So, that's the reason that when the brachialis will be connected, brachialis will not be connected on this round shaft, brachialis will be connected on that triangular shaft, right? So, that is the entromedial, entromedial, entrolateral, anterior border and the septas, right? So, this is the first thing. Right, I hope you will, this is shaft, right? So that shaft, I'm not writing full sentence that shape of the shaft changes from circular to triangle. I know you, you got it, okay? So this is the first thing. And next, what is, what extra is attached, right? This second point, which is that it is at this level where the Intra and the intermuscular septum, not the intra, it has to be inter, right? Inter. Intermuscular septum, because intra to is inside the muscle. So this is intermuscular between those flexor and extensor. Intermuscular septums, they are clearly defined. So it means what when when it was circular. So those intermuscular septums, they are like this, right? They are bit like this, like this. But when it comes to like over here, they are sharply and clearly defined. So that's the level. So intermuscular septum that is medial and lateral, they are, we'll say, clearly defined, right? Clearly defined. Yeah, that is good, important point. Third, there would be few muscles which will be attached over here, right? So, who else? Over here, which muscle? Huh? This, this muscle is what? Which muscle we are showing it over here, right? Which muscle you are watching it over here? This is medial head, right? Medial head of triceps, right? That's why it has been shown from the side, right? This is medial head of triceps. Then, uh, yeah, same, right? This one, 
this is medial head triceps right when rest of the muscles are removed so you can really see that how big the triceps is and how nicely it can be seen okay right there is coracobrachialis that is also attached at that level right over here one more muscle that is brachialis right brachialis is also attached at that level and obviously the deltoid because of the deltoid tuberosity right deltoid so what one from circle to triangle second intermuscular septums right i'm just writing like this that, that means they are clearly defined and the muscles and the muscles muscles which can be seen so deltoid right then medial head triceps then brachialis and the coraco brachialis right these are the muscles which are attached so far all good now comes the interesting portion we are dealing with this level right we are dealing with this level that level at, at which oh slightly below right the level at which these are the changes which we are watching okay so over here just by look at it immediately you will say that we are dealing with the brachial artery correct brachial artery now this brachial artery is as such situated medially right this brachial artery is situated medially that's the reason that when we take the blood pressure right you tie the cuff over here right so if you if you touch on the medial aspect yes you will be able to figure out the pulse right right thank you so that's that's the medial side so just a small physiology part you said that we can take the blood pressure correct blood pressure <coughs> how do you take the blood pressure it means you tie the cuff and then you inflate all the way right till till there are no pulse right it means the pressure is sufficient to occlude arterial system and the venous system both right now there is so much of pressure there are two types of blood pressure systolic and the diastolic correct so now you start releasing the pressure you release the pressure and you have put your stethoscope over here to hear one specific type of sound name of that sound is what because the moment you hear that sound that means that now the pressure is sufficiently lowered to release the arteries and when the blood gushes from those arteries it leads to formation of a sound that's what we call as the systolic right and then slowly and gradually because any any of the structure if it is pinched right if it is pinched so then it will when the fluid is passing through it it will generate noise when it is fully dilated so then the fluid is going smoothly there won't be any sound right there won't be any sound not the lub lub dub they are for the cardiac right over here right it is called as i know it is a very strange name it is called as the corat cough sound corat cough sound right i used to wonder means parents of this koratkov they will they be telling like koratkov breakfast is ready means by the time they will say koratkov the breakfast would turn cold right those sandwiches will become cold such a complex name but anyway right so that sound is called as the koratkov sound right which which you listen on the stethoscope yeah so systolic is that is when you hear that so sound that sound is like tuk 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 right that type of sound when you hear it it means bus the point at which the systole systolic blood pressure is there right it is yeah koratkov sounds okay and when that sound stops that is the diastolic pressure so it is at this point when this brachial artery 
from its medial aspect it becomes anterior right so this is an important point that is from medial it becomes anterior right this is the fourth thing so first was that circle second was that intermuscular septum and third one was those muscles right four muscles deltoid coracobrachialis brachialis and the posterior part was the medial head of triceps four muscles and this fourth point is for this brachial artery right where it is changing the direction from this point onwards now you have to pay very proper attention because things are going to be bit dirty now now the game real the real game starts now because small structures and the names would be bit similar right but this is where if you understand this you will be the winner right so let's see and we'll be doing massive revision today only right we'll repeat those things so much that you won't be having any problem so here it is let's make things easy first right so yeah just by look at it you must have noticed that this is posterior portion right this is posterior part right because here is the scapula correct so that is the scapular region and obviously this is the back right which muscle is this i know i'm asking you crazily but this muscle which muscle is this any idea which muscle is this lats no lats is not like this lats muscle is a very royal muscle right it's like this this is the direction is ulta rhomboidus major well get yes yes this is if you say inferior serratus you have to yes that's right this is serratus which is posterior inferior serratus right because there was anterior serratus anterior and then there is serratus posterior in serratus posterior there is superior and the inferior right so this is serratus sorry this is serratus posterior inferior that's right good one right right okay now coming back to our main topic right it is this level which we are dealing with it is it is this level which we are dealing with right at this level that's the brachial artery i'm just writing b this brachial artery right which muscle is this because we were telling that this is axillary artery and suddenly we are telling it brachial artery so because of this gentleman and he is he is which muscle is this whose lower border is telling that okay it's the time to change the name lower border of which muscle it tells that okay axillary now you are brachial right this one is this one is are infraspinatus infraspinatus to is is here this is infraspinatus hai na yeah that is teres major that's right that's right it is teres major right teres major got it right and this teres major will go all the way to where will it land where will be the flight of teres major <clears throat> would land let's see right where would it land teres major right where would it land giving you the hint hmm where will it be inserted in other words there is major medial lip of intertubercular groove excellent excellent that's the complete answer right 
that is a complete answer because in between there is lats lat is much dorsi and pectoralis major which is on the lateral lip because that was the first muscle which was introduced when we first met right so only place which is left out is the medial lip of intertubercular groove excellent right good one okay chalo back to track so this is brachialis and this muscle uh, um, this is this is brachial artery and it is giving a branch which is a very very powerful branch and it has got lots of blood so we call this profunda profunda means profundus means abundant so much right so this is profunda brachii profunda brachii this profunda brachii also called as the deep brachial artery right it is in some books it will be written like deep brachial artery or profunda brachii artery anything you call it but when it, it it takes the dip it is at this level it divides right remember brachial artery right as soon as it is called brachial artery at this level at the lower border of teres major it will give a branch that is profunda brachii but near the deltoid tuberosity at the level of deltoid tuberosity this deep brachii brachial artery will divide it will divide into collateral collateral arteries and obviously these collateral arteries one is going laterally right so we'll call it radial so that is radial collateral artery and someone is in the middle which is highlighted right this one which is which is highlighted and just zoom is right here it is here right this one right see this one right that is middle that is middle collateral artery and this one is the radial collateral artery correct so radial and the middle right remember it is middle middle because there is another one called ulnar so one is radial one is one is ulnar so obviously this middle one will be called middle okay this brachial artery right it will be giving a branch it will be giving a branch right and that branch which will be going posteriorly now now the thing is actually right now there is a branch i i i'm not very sure if you can really see it but it is i'll just draw it trust me i'll show you it in another image also but this small one right it is traveling all the way right it is it is going all the way that is called as superior ulnar collateral artery ulnar right so that's why it will be going on the ulnar side right so ulnars they are all going posteriorly so this will be going posteriorly so this is going posterior because brachial artery to aage ja ke then it will be dividing into radial and the ulnar main divisions right so brachial cannot go back it just gives one branch and that branch superior ulnar collateral artery is occurring at this level so we learned two things that this profunda brachii right that profunda brachii it divides this is one and this ulnar collateral emerges that is two right so that's the level which we are talking about right that's the level and it is at this level when this medial is taking it on right from medial to lateral and it is also leading to this emergence of other arteries okay now let's see let's add over here see there are no nerves now we are making it bit complex right how come say this is the medial side right and the medial side and that's the lateral side 
medial side so this is the ulnar side so that means this is this highlighted thing is nothing but it is superior ulnar collateral artery correct right so it is going back and this brachial right it is moving further now we are adding along with it the nerves right so here we add now the nerves are added the moment nerves are added it will make the entire picture very very interesting because now the relations this is the figure this is the image which you have to remember it will make you a star let's first identify can we identify everything first thing first right superior ulnar collateral artery right that you you can easily watch right regarding don't worry about rest of the nerves but see there is there is one friend for everyone that all of them they believe in friendship so if there is a pair everything is in the form of pair right so there is one now one artery one now one artery everywhere it is like that just you have to see that how this complex jungle is actually created right this wiring system is what you have to understand so we'll start with that superior ulnar collateral collateral artery right that we know it right because it is branch of well it is no now you know it it is a branch of say brachial artery right big one so that's why we have selected a big artery right brachial artery bigger one and so the nerve which would be associated with superior ulnar collateral artery would be i deliberately ask this shocking question right so which nerve will be associated which is going posteriorly which shocking nerve would it be it would be ulnar nerve <laughs> correct so this is easy right this part was easy okay now as we know that brachial artery right brachial artery to is a is a king artery Right? it's a king artery big one it will go all the way then it will divide into radial and ulnar right ulnar artery so brachial artery is a big one so when it is a big artery going on so obviously it would be accompanied by the nerve of that level right so which nerve are we dealing with the nerve which is going on the medial aspect right now you know it now which is going on the medial aspect and two cords they contributed to the formation of that nerve and that is the median nerve excellent right so see two things so they are done right so you know this part and you know this part so this is done this is done very good even rest of them are still easier very easy okay now we'll talk about those candidates which were as such uh, uh, okay one one more thing so when we talk about ulnar collateral right ulnar collateral artery and the ulnar nerve so actually they are anterior or posterior that is in the arm in the arm they are anterior or posterior my question is that this particular pair is anterior or posterior actually it is anterior right brachial artery itself is anterior so when it will give a branch to that is also anterior and this ulnar nerve to ulnar nerve to we have never ever heard that it will be going into the posterior compartment in posterior compartment who is going only two axillary right and the and the royal radial right otherwise no one else was going posteriorly but over here these are anterior structures but now yes exactly they are anterior yes you are thinking right right they are anterior but from anterior they have to go posterior now true they have to go posterior so if they have to go posterior they will pierce what they will pierce pierce which intermuscular septum intermuscular septum 
I know you will say, why are you asking such easy questions? But yes, I am asking. Right? They will pierce which intermuscular septum? They will be piercing. They will be piercing. Medial, exactly, right? They will be piercing medial intermuscular septum. So, that's it. So, you have learnt now, when such questions are asked, that tell the nerve which will be piercing, tell the nerve and the artery piercing medial intermuscular septum. What's the big deal in that? What's the big deal, right? It is this ulnar nerve which was always anterior, but because it wanted to give us the shock, that's why it wants to go posteriorly, right? And that's the reason that it pierced medial intermuscular septum. That royal radial nerve which was always posterior but then suddenly at the elbow it felt like that now I want to come on the stage and then for that catwalk it, it pierced the lateral intermuscular septum and came on the stage of cubital fossa. Right? So, chalo. Two things done with this concept. Now we move on to one more. By the way, Let's see how many changes you remember, right? First one, so you will I will will draw it in in the form of just a symbolic language. So this this page would be like a, your high speed revision, right? Then I'll just say intermuscular septa, right? And I'll just say this. It means that they are clean, right? They are clearly defined. Then for those muscles, right? Muscles, so we'll say deltoid tuberosity because that's the level which we are talking about. Deltoid tuberosity. Then that one was say brachialis, correct? Brachialis. And then there was one more muscle which was coming over there and it was landing at that point. That was coracobrachialis. And on the posterior aspect, there was the triceps and we were dealing with the medial head. So I think if we draw it this much, right? This is good. Okay. Right. Then the fourth. The brachial artery, what was happening to that brachial artery? Well, the brachial artery, as we said, remember that blood pressure, right? Blood pressure, it was on the medial aspect. And from the medial aspect, now it becomes anterior. Now, as we are talking about the brachial artery, so brachial artery is giving a branch, right? It is giving a branch and that branch is called as the profunda brachii, profunda brachii, right? This profunda brachii, which will be going on the posterior side so we just write it over here this is the posterior division with posterior compartment which we are dealing with and this profunda brachii it divides it divides into what radial and the middle right remember it was the radial and the middle collateral arteries right what else if we talk about radial middle collateral so then what is what is on the ulnar side well on the ulnar side, it was superior, right? Superior ulnar, ulnar collateral artery. This superior ulnar collateral artery, it goes from, so it is it is from which? Well, well, it is from brachial, right? It is from brachial, branch of brachial. Superior ulnar collateral artery. It, is, it will be accompanying, well, ulnar, ulnar, bye, bye, right? So it will say, okay, chalo, I'll be a going with ulnar now and that's that happens at this level one more thing happens at this level because it goes from from anterior to posterior right so then and then it becomes that shocking now so it pierces that intermuscular septum and which intermuscular septum obviously it has to be the medial one and one more important thing which we have not seen this bone right this area is so good right that it becomes like a hangout so over here that nutrient artery comes to feed right so it is this nutrient artery to this particular bone that it comes at this level so these are the changes that's the reason that this deltoid tuberosity right this deltoid tuberosity is so important so many things they are occurring at this point or at this level okay now it is easy all all completely easy right so if i say this this group it is what it is superior ulnar 
collateral artery right and it would be associated with ulnar nerve okay done this group this group right both are big boss right this is the brachial artery and and the median median now done so they are big so let's put them into good frame and here is here is one more pair this pair so that pair is what right someone who is coming from the posterior side right and that is the radial now correct radial now and then there is one more right radial now is okay but which artery is associated with it that is the radial recurrent artery now from where this radial recurrent artery has suddenly come up right this radial recurrent artery so this one uh, just one. this is radial recurrent collateral right radial collateral radial collateral and we remember this radial collateral from that that posteriorly profunda brachii from profunda brachii right it splits and then it splits and that on the radial side this is lateral and in between was the middle right exactly so that is done so finally only one one bichari ek alag choti si this not choti si it is so important but which nerve is this right which is just isolated no one is with that nerve right so this nerve tells that who am i so which nerve is this right the rest all has been identified but who is this which nerve is this do it's it it won't end up over here right musculocutaneous exactly this is musculocutaneous right and musculocutaneous is from which cord is from which cord now you will answer it correctly musculocutaneous is from yes musculocutaneous yes sure but it is from which cord lateral cord that's right it is from lateral cord excellent good good now let's see a bird's view right so that entire picture is completely clear or or let's let's take a sort of exam sort of thing right say just i'll write 1 2 3 4 5 5 right on in in your books you just write down the answers and i'll give you just one minute and after that we'll write down the answers so let's see just identify right identify all one two and three and four and let me trick you a bit five you have to identify these nerves that nerves and the cords and the cords from which they are emerging right you have to identify now don't write it here right just write it 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 and then we'll start writing the answers right this would be like this is like an honest thing so one minute i don't write the answers here right don't write the answers here so one minute now 30 seconds last 15 Ten, nine, seven, six. Okay, okay. So let's write down this one. Right, coming obliquely, classical, no doubt about it. Musculo 
cutaneous, right? And then that musculocutaneous done, yeah. Musculocutaneous, right? This is from, we'll just write L, lateral cord, correct? <clears throat> And this one, deeper one, which was posterior, and then it is coming anterior. So, this has to be the radial now, right? Excellent. And radial, no doubt about it. So many times, it is just the posterior one. Good. This one, as it is so big, so powerful, right? Median, because made by contribution of two chords. So, this is median median now and it is by medial plus lateral cord correct fourth one which is ulnar 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 is by median right but because it is bit thin small because most of the contribution goes towards the median now only so that is and this five five is what right is ulnar only right just we are watching it at the lower end and obviously it is the medial one okay done i i hope all of you have must have answered it correctly hmm. right i i in fact i know that you must have answered it correctly right very good very good okay chalo next one one more test, one more test. Identify. Just this time you'll just, I, I'll give you say 30 seconds. Okay. So, in fact, you can just start drawing, I'm um, writing parallelly also. So, this is what? This is 3, right? And this one, this one is 4, right? So, which one? Which are they? 1, 2, 3, 4. Just 15 seconds more and fata fat, right? Write down the answers. So, 1 is what? Okay, time up. Okay, so 1 is <clears throat> the direction musculoskeletal, musculocutaneous, right? Musculoskeletal, musculocutaneous now. Okay, <clears throat> then this 2 from the direction, right? This is radial. Correct radial now, right? Musculocutan is now all the nerves. This three, which was all the way going back, this is the ulnar now, right? And this fourth one, <coughs> the big, big one, it is the median now, right? Good one, good one. So let's go further, right? That's how the radial now will be going into this is now we are watching posteriorly right so that's the royal radial in groove right that's how we when we watch it from the posterior aspect okay so this musculocutaneous that's all the way the, the full musculocutaneous all the way it as it is emerging from the top and it is going down. So when we say musculocutaneous, right? First portion to it is settled. Musculocutaneous as it is emerging from lateral cord, that is fine. It would be supplying coracobrachialis, brachialis, and the biceps brachii, all good. That is the muscular part. What about this cutaneous part? Right, that we have not talked about. Why we are calling? Otherwise, we should have called it musculo branch, but it is musculocutaneous. It is like from the elbow comes the second part, that is the cutaneous part. And in elbow, in elbow, it continues as what's called as lateral, lateral cutaneous, cutaneous nerve of forearm. That's what is called as, right? So now it completes the whole mystery that why it is muscular because of these muscles, why it is cutaneous because it continues as a lateral cutaneous nerve of forearm. Right? Good. Good. That's right. Okay. 
So here it is, right? It pierces what? Important, it pierces coracobrachialis because these are some very vital points. Pierces coracobrachialis. Yes, that's what it does, right? And then as it goes, this is sandwiched, right? It is sandwiched between, because see how notorious this musculoscutaneous, musculocutaneous nerve is. First, it pierces coracobrachialis and then it is sandwiched between, between biceps brachii and the brachialis, right? So that's how it goes, right? Moving further. Now, no point in asking these questions. This is deltoid, this is packed major, right? You will, you know it so well. This is what coracobrachial is and this is brachial is, right? On all these are triceps. This is the lateral head of triceps. That's the long head of triceps. And the, so this one would be obviously musculocutaneous and this one this one which is coming anteriorly so it would be the medial median now right and this one which is going back right it is ulnar right so just like a whole picture okay same thing right same thing just in different combination yeah right so this you can just sometimes if you want to just revise it so you can just pause and then you can figure out that which one is which okay same thing right you know this so maybe you can just say which i if i put the number this is one is what what are these two these are the muscular branches of musculocutaneous nerve what is this three that is the median nerve what is this four that is the ulnar nerve right all all known to you good yeah, this is also crystal clear, right? Because we talked about it. It is the teres major, right? It is the teres, teres major's lower border, which tells that from here, we shall call you brachial instead of axillary, right? So that's the level, that's the level. Right? And then it is easy, right? It goes downwards medially in front of the elbow and then all the way it comes down. We are dealing with, this is what is brachial artery. Now it is like a wide view, right? Long, up bird's view so that we are watching the entire course. In between, we were watching only specific areas. Now it is making things much clearer. By the way, what, which vessel is this, right? I just zoom it and... And I'm talking about this. Which vessel is this? Which one is it? Uh, if there is any inflammation in biceps or brachialis muscle, does it affect muscular? Definitely. Definitely. It's like inflammation, but uh, say sometimes because of say heavy lifting or when these muscles are severely contracted yes it can cause problem yes it can cause problem okay. sometimes you must have seen that those spasm it goes in so much of spasm and and so much so right uh profundus exactly right that is profundus or the it is the profunda brachii its other name deep brachial right? deep brachial excellent Right? because that was the level so yes if the if the nerve is involved yes it can lead to problems right it will lead to loss of sensation over here just we have added few nerves but now the nerves are well known to you this was the point that which nerve is over here but no now i will not insult you that which nerve is this it right and i will not tell you that this is a median nerve Right? I'll not tell you that. And also, I'll not tell you that this is the musculocutaneous. I'll also not tell you that this one is, is radial now. Okay. So here, 
just from the upper portion where things are emerging this is just for your idea that what really is happening at the upper level right keep in eye keep and focus on this one so that is over here it is axillary and then it will be the brachial so we'll just write axillary or the brachial artery right that's what it goes now from that level right just over here right if you see this crossing right it is the musculo cutaneous now right see it crosses all the way right it crosses all the way and then the nerve which is over here which is over here see they they emerge almost together and then they start getting compartmentalized right so this is traveling anteriorly and then later on it pierces and it goes on the opposite side it is the ulnar nerve right and then the bigger nerve which is accompanying almost all the way with the artery it cannot be anyone else other than median nerve right so though it looks a bit complex but things are pretty neat and yes you are right that just below this that is the profunda right that is the profunda okay yeah right as it goes down once again that's the pairs which they make and you know those pairs you know these radial this is musculoskeletal right all all known well yeah identify all of them one two three four and you know this thing you know this thing right so this one is the important because this is anterior so this would be the median now right as it is accompanying such a big artery and that is the brachial artery and this brachial artery and this one is what this one is biceps brachii right it is biceps brachii tendon or aponeurosis flattened one yeah exactly and then someone who is coming from the back side so yes this is the radial now right and one which is just from the top right from over here that is the musculo cutaneous now right good one this is for the elbow just watch two or three things only this was that cute name capitulum right we'll be discussing it at length next time this one is trochlea trochlea right and say ulna radius right and that one is radial tuberosity right this is the tuberosity this tuberosity we were interested in because it was the that biceps tendon was coming over here right this portion as it is on ulna so if there is radial tuberosity right if there is radial tuberosity so similarly there is ulnar tuberosity right there is ulnar tuberosity so i think this much is sufficient to know that what is at the elbow though so many structures will be there and yes that's the brachialis right and this one very smart shaped muscle this is supinator supinator you know what is pronation and supination right pronation and supination so when you do your hand is in supination say thanks to this supinator and this is how we introduce the first candidate of the elbow just as a glimpse right and we'll call this area as cubital fossa right and in that cubital fossa yes that's the musculocutaneous 
cutaneous nerve which will be imparting its cutaneous power right it is this radial nerve which will be giving its contribution and this one is median nerve this will be taking control on the anterior side and the posterior side right we have got ulnar nerve right so nicely compartmentalized and where they will end up well median nerve would say that i do have are there so many muscles in forearm right because in forearm to there are so many muscles so all these nerves become very happy and they start giving branches so these are the muscular branches right muscular branches of median nerve same way these are the muscular branches of muscular branches of radial nerve because that's their destiny they were supposed to supply all these muscles right so that's how they go <coughs> good enough right and then we add that brachial artery just to make the picture complete right so that was for today right revise it bit properly and tomorrow we'll be going for the second part of the arm that is posterior compartment right posterior compartment of arm that is arm part 2 thank you so much and we'll meet tomorrow same time bye bye thank you